I'm still in chapter 58. I'm on page 1203, beginning with hepatitis. Hepatitis is when there's inflammation of the liver cells that is widespread. Um, hepatitis is typically viral, and it can be acute or chronic. Um, other causes can be from chemicals, drugs, certain types of herbs. Um, viral hepatitis results um, in hepatitis A, hepatitis B, hepatitis C, hepatitis D, and hepatitis E. Um, toxic and drug-induced hepatitis, those typically occur from exposure to industrial toxins, alcohol, and drugs. Hepatitis can also occur as a secondary infection. Um, typically, when there is any type of edema of the bile channels in the liver, the patient has obstructive jaundice. Now, with hepatitis A, um, so hepatitis A survives on human hands. It's destroyed by bleach and high temperatures. Typically, the individual that um, has hepatitis A infection will have flu-like symptoms, and it often goes unrecognized. The most common spread or um, the spread of hepatitis A is by the fecal oral route or consuming contaminated food or water. Now, um, shellfish caught in contaminated water or food contaminated by handlers infected with hepatitis A virus are also sources of infection. Um, the incubation period is 15 to 50 days with a peak of 25 to 30. Hepatitis A virus is typically um, more, there's a, a higher incidence in countries that have poor sanitation. Hepatitis B virus. Um, hepatitis B virus is typically transmitted through unprotected sexual intercourse with an infected partner, sharing needles, accidental needle sticks or injuries from sharp instruments, primarily in healthcare workers, blood transfusions before 1992, hemodialysis, and close person-to-person -person contact by open cuts and sores. Um, Someone who is immunosuppressed by disease or uh, drug therapies are more likely to develop hepatitis B. Symptoms typically occur within 25 to 180 days of exposure, and those symptoms include anorexia, nausea, and vomiting, fever, fatigue, jaundice, right upper quadrant pain, and dark urine with light stool. Hepatitis carriers, they can infect others even if they're not sick and they have no obvious signs of hepatitis B. Chronic carriers are at high risk for cirrhosis and liver cancer. Okay, Most adults who get the hepatitis B virus clear the virus from their body and develop an immunity, but there are hepat hepatitis carriers. Hepatitis C um, is a transmission is blood to blood. Typically, it's most commonly spread by IV drug needle sharing, blood products or organ transplants before 1992, needle stick injuries with hepatitis C virus contaminated blood, um, unsanitary tattooing equipment, and sharing of intranasal uh, paraphernalia. Now, the disease is not transmitted by casual contact or by intimate household contact. Um, incubation is seven weeks. Um, typically, most people are completely unaware that they have been infected, um, usually not diagnosed or symptomatic until months or years after the initial exposure. Um, with hepatitis B, most people can clear the virus. With hepatitis C, people cannot clear the virus, and um, so hepatitis C is considered a chronic infection. Um, hepatitis C typically damages over decades and by causing that chronic inflammation um, and causing scarring, and that scarring can progress to cirrhosis. Hepatitis D. Hepatitis D is um, a virus that needs hepatitis B in order to function, okay? So it occurs only with the hepatitis B virus to cause replication. Um, typically, it's a chronic disease and incubation period is about 14 to 56 days. 
parenteral roots, uh, you know, IV drug users, those having sexual contact um, are at high risk for obtaining hepatitis D. Hepatitis E is a waterborne infection. It's typically in Indian, Asia, Africa, Middle East, Mexico, Central and South America. Um, most likely it's caused by the fecal contamination of food and water. Incubation is 15 to 64 days and it is self-limiting and resolves on its own. So complications of hepatitis, um, typically the liver cells fail to regenerate. We have fulminant hepatitis and chronic hepatitis. Um, whenever the liver cells fail to regenerate and the necrosis progresses, um, that's known as fulminant hepatitis. Chronic hepatitis typically is going to occur because of hepatitis B or hepatitis C. Um, hepatitis B and hepatitis C are uh, individuals with those infections are at risk for um, cirrhosis and liver cancer. Now it's important for health promotion and maintenance for these patients. Um, proper hand washing, especially after handling shellfish, avoiding contaminated food or water, receiving um, immunoglobulin within 14 days if exposed to virus. Uh, this is for hepatitis A. Um, receiving a hepatitis A vaccine, uh, A virus vaccine before traveling to places like the Caribbean or Mexico. And receiving the vaccine if you live or work in an enclosed area such as um, prisons, daycares, dorms, like dormitories or long-term care facilities. Now, um, examples, hepatitis B virus does have a vaccine and it's important to make sure to, um, that people are getting vaccinated with this, um, with this immunization. Now, whenever we're taking a history on these patients, we wanna know if there's been any exposure to inhaled or ingested chemicals, any use of herbal or over-the-counter medications. We wanna know about their sexual activities, um, whether it was protected or unprotected. We wanna know about any illicit drug use, whether intranasal or IV. Um, for healthcare workers, recent needle stick exposures, body piercing or tattooings, we want to know about any close living accommodations. We want to know about the history of alcohol use, any um, type of infection, or any blood products being received before the year of 1992. Now, um, physical assessment. So we can see that these patients typically are going to have joint pain, muscle pain, sometimes diarrhea and constipation, changes in their color of urine or stool. They're going to have puritis or itching, um, abdominal pain, changes in their skin, and um, or icterus, and malaise. Okay, so dark urine and clay-colored stools are typically reported by the patient. Um, hepatitis A, hepatitis B, and hepatitis C are usually confirmed by um, elevations of liver enzymes. So levels of ALT and AST can rise into the thousands in acute or fulminant cases of hepatitis. Um, the presence of immunoglobulin M antibodies um, are typically present when there's an ongoing uh, infection by hepatitis A. A previous infection, there will be immunoglobulin G antibodies. Okay, um, these antibodies provide permanent immunity to hepatitis A virus. Okay, the patient with hepatitis B virus is infectious as long as hepatitis B surface antigens are present in the blood. Okay, now people who have been vaccinated against um, hepatitis B virus, they have a positive um, hepatitis B surface antigen because they also have immunity to the disease. Okay, uh, the ELISA test is the initial screening for hepatitis C virus. Um, antibodies can be detected within four weeks of the infection. The REBA or recombinant immunoblot assay, that is also used as a confirmatory test for hepatitis C. Now, liver biopsies can be performed on these patients. Um, typically, the 
a sample was taken and it's sent to a pathologist so he can determine, you know, if the cause is from a virus or a fatty liver or some other type of disease, okay? Um, in the next audio, I will begin with interventions on page 1206.